Hi there, I'm Henry Harrison. I'm here from our Brown & Co uh, Norwich office from our agribusiness consultancy team. And I'm just gonna have a brief overview of contract farming agreements and some key points to consider. So just going back to the basics, uh, a contract farming agreement is a joint venture between two parties. The key being a joint venture in that the two individual businesses continue trading in their own right. So the two parties involved generally bring their own bit to the table. Firstly, there's the farmer who uh, typically is the landowner who will provide land uh, a number two account which is a contract farming bank account uh, and also any farm buildings such as grain storage. The contractor will then bring his machinery, labour and also uh, any surplus grain storage capacity that he might have available alongside his management expertise. So it's important with any contract farming agreement that there's a formal written agreement that documents the terms of the relationship. So this will set out the agreed number two account, i.e. contract farming account income and expenditure, um, including variable costs, seed for sprays, and also any certain agreed fixed costs such as water drainage, insurance, etc. This will also be key in that it will set out the first charges that are charged by each party, by it being the farmer and the contractor, alongside the profit shares that are due at the end of the contract farming year. So any well-structured contract farming agreement should provide mutual benefits to each party. For the farmer, who is landowner, he should benefit from being able to retain control over his land and occupation of it. Further to this, there's the associated tax benefits with him or her retaining themselves as a trading entity rather than letting the land out on FBT. And also there's the ability to release working capital via the dispersal of surplus machinery and release of labour. For the contractor, there's clearly the benefits of economies of scale by increasing the land area that's farmed with existing labour and machinery resources. And secondly, there should hopefully be some improvements to the cash flow for that contracting business via quarterly or perhaps even monthly contracting payments. The ultimate benefit should provide increased returns to both parties via the improvements in efficiency gained through at better allocation of machinery and labour resources and also the performance related to returns that are provided back to the contractor as opposed to being uh, paid for on a per operation basis. Like many aspects of agriculture, the impact of the war, war in Ukraine and subsequent inflation that we've seen in the last sort of 12 to 18 months, that's also influenced contract farming agreements. This notably influenced the contractor's costs in terms of machinery, fuel, labour and also finance. On top of that, we're also experiencing a change in ag policy regime with the reduction of basic payment scheme, introduction of sustainable farming incentive and also wider uptake of countryside stewardship and rotational options within the arable rotation. That means we therefore need to look at this, how the contract farming agreements are structured and ensure that they remain fair and equitable for each party. The important thing to bear in mind with any contract farming agreement is that the relationship is key. Brown & Co tend to have a very regular management involvement within all our contract farming agreements where we tend to meet with both the farmer and contractor in a formal setting on a quarterly or at least twice annually basis. This ensures that the terms of the agreement are upheld and any matters which are open for dispute can be sold in an amicable manner. Therefore, any advice regarding contract farming agreement, whether it's tendering for a new farm, looking at a change in your structure of your business, then please get into contact with your local Brown & Co office and speak to a member of the Agricultural Business Consultancy team.